Okay, in this lesson, we are going to duplicate exactly what we did in the last video for um, the After Effects. But we're going to do it in Premiere this time. And Premiere does have some animation ability. It's not nearly as good as After Effects, but if you just want to do some simple moving things around, animating text and a few graphics around, um, Premiere can do it for you. And maybe it's not necessary for you to learn After Effects, but I would highly recommend that you give After Effects a go first because it's going to give you much more possibilities as you become more creative and you want to do more things with your animations. Okay, so to do that, I've just started a new project and a new sequence based on the same settings, the HD uh, 1920 1080 at one square pixel. And I'm double clicking in here, clicking in here, and I'm going to bring in those same assets. I'm also going to bring in this white PNG. I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay, those are all in, and let me just drag my voiceover down onto the audio. Remember that with a voiceover, we started at one minute, so let's just drag it up there. Drag this back here and bring this down, so we only need about 30 seconds or so. I'm also going to have to drop this white PNG. The reason is, in Premiere, I can't set the background color. It's going to default to black. So I've created a white, solid white image in Photoshop at the right dimensions, 1920 by 1080. Um, and I've just imported that in as well. So that will give me the white background that I need for the map. Finally, with the Alt key down, I'm going to double click on my assets and I'm going to bring the map in and I'm going to just drop that map over there. And again, I'm going to drag it out to the 30 second mark. So that's all my assets ready to go. I'm just going to start now with the animation. Do you remember we started with this house? And again, I'm going to drop that down onto the timeline and I'm going to start to animate it. Okay, I'm going to just jump up. I'm pressing the plus key here so I can see the seconds more clearly. There we go. And if you remember what we did in the last animation is that we had that house just jump up within the first two seconds. It just sprung up from nothing. Okay, to do that, what I'm going to do is to click on the house layer, video three, and you'll see up here in my effects control, it's going to give me some of the same options that I saw back in After Effects. Okay, that done. I'm on this. I'm going to double click on this, and we're starting at zero. I want to make it small, but before I do that, I want to check the scale timer here. So for the scale timer, let's bring that down, it's very small, and then I bring it up to two seconds, like I did before, and then in two seconds, I'm going to, oops, let's just bring that back to make it go bigger. I'm having a problem finding the edge, there we go. So now we're going to pop it up nice and big that's going to happen in those first two seconds. And if you remember correctly, when I got to six seconds, what happened then with the scale was that it was going to move off to the left and get a bit smaller. Now I'm only dealing with scale at the moment, so I'm going to put in a keyframe here, just very much the same as we did with After Effects. It's important you do that. And then I'm going to say between six seconds and eight seconds, I want it to get a little bit smaller. Okay. Now I also need it to, it's a bit too small there, is to drag it off to the left. And to do that, I need to go back to the six second mark. And now I need to turn on the position here. And I move it from here. And then I go over to eight seconds and I move it off to the left, just like we did before. Okay, so now if I go back and I play this from the start, we should see that house jumping up in the first two seconds, as we saw there. And then as we move on, it's going to move and scale off to the left hand side. Perfect. Okay, exactly what I did before. Now I also remember I put some text in and I scaled, uh, sorry, I made the text come in and then fade out. Simplest way to do that is to go up to File and New and click your title and it says OK. And I'm going to click in here, get my text tool, and we're going to start with one million villages. OK, 
Now I might want to play around with this a little bit uh, just to make it more interesting. So to do that, let's just select this text. In fact, I'm going to make it more boring. I'm going to make it very simple. So I'm going to make it black and I'm going to change it to Arial. Just so we can very quickly see how we're going to make this happen. OK, there's my text. One million villages that's going to come up. I now close down my title. It's going to appear here in um, over in my bin here and I can drag that down and put it down on the timeline. Again, it was six seconds. And if you remember, I click on this. What we did is we had the opacity starting at zero. So let's go to the opacity and we're going to bring that down to zero. And then we come to two seconds. And then that jumped up 100%. And then we went to four seconds. Need to put in a keyframe again. And then at six seconds, it had faded out to nothing. OK, so again, we've got that now coming nicely up and in. And all we need to do now is to create that final, that other piece of text here. So new title. And again, this now is the eight million villagers. Let's go down to here and put in uh, sorry, 800 million, 800 million peasants. I think it was the wording. And I'm going to highlight that, change the color again to black, and change it to aerial, and then move it over to over here. That's about right. Uh, okay, close that, and that's going to come up here now also in my title bar. Title bar. Now, this one was going to start at two seconds, and it should be going through till, I think, eight seconds. So, again, the same thing. Let's do this one more time. I click on it. I can see my opacity. I'm going to start on zero. I'm going to go up two seconds later. I'm going to bring it up to 100%. Two seconds later, I need to put in a keyframe. And then two seconds later, I'm going to bring it down to zero. So the opacity comes down to zero. OK, so there we go. It comes up and then disappears. Just as we did before. Now, the one other thing, if you remember, was as that was moving in, we were bringing this tool in onto the right hand side coming in from nowhere. So again, we need to change the scale so that we can bring it in from off the frame. OK, so finally, we're going to bring in the tool. So here it is up here. and I'm going to drag it down onto this side here. You can see I click on it. It's too big. So I'm going to scale it down just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And you remember with the tool, we had it coming from off screen. So with this selected here, I'm going to go to motion and click on the position tool. So let's do that again on the position tool that's now clicking away. And as we come to eight seconds, I'm going to bring it in and have it come in from the left there. OK, and then that's going to stick. OK, so that's all done. Let's just play it back. And as you see, I have duplicated exactly what I've done in After Effects. So there you go. I, it's not perfect. I need to play around with it to get it tight. But you can see that within Premiere, you have pretty well the same basic functionality, though you might have to do it slightly differently as you would do in After Effects. But as I said at the beginning of this video, I would highly recommend that you stick with After Effects if you want to make things a little bit more complex.